Hi there, this is Scott with St. Al's Boise Respiratory Care. I'm going to be going over a few little tidbits with the Hamilton C6, some buttonology modes and things to know about this particular ventilator. So first, let's get started with some of the button tidbits, things like that. So I'm going to start ventilation. So our most important thing is obviously noticing that we do have some waveforms here. These are our most important waveforms. They're going to be the pressure, the flow, and the volume ones. This will be able to identify if the patient is ventilating and how well they are doing. If you're looking on here, trying to find if the patient is actually triggering breaths, because remember with the Avia, all of our breaths were coded red for when it was a mandatory breath, and if it turned yellow, it meant that it was an assisted breath. Unfortunately, now with this one, it doesn't change colors, but it has these little triangles underneath each breath where they've actually manually taken a breath. Otherwise, it'll just have nothing below it. Now, don't pay too close attention to those colors of the triangles. They just change based off of some of our settings. So sometimes they may be pink, sometimes they may be yellow, sometimes they may be blue. Over here on the front of the device, don't be too afraid of any of these actual buttons that are here because nothing here will actually hurt the patient. So here you have a alarm silence button. This will silence the alarms for two minutes. Here you have an increase oxygen button. Now this will increase the oxygen to 100% for two minutes. After it reaches that two minutes, it's gonna automatically drop back down. Now with this ventilator, there is no suction button, but there is, well, yeah, sorry, there is no suction button, but you instead we have to hit the increase oxygen button and the alarm silence button in order to achieve this. I'll turn that off so the oxygen supply failure goes away. Uh, here we have a manual breath, so if you do accidentally press that, it's just gonna give a manual breath and it won't actually harm the patient. This is a print screen button. It does not physically do anything because I do not have anything plugged into the computer or into the ventilator, I mean. And here is a screen lock button. This one is kind of my favorite button because if I accidentally press this screen and it is a very sensitive screen, it will actually just beep and tell me that the screen is locked instead of accidentally touching one of the settings and making changes that I didn't want to do. After that, we do have the nebulizer button. This will not function currently because there is nothing plugged into the front of the ventilator. And then here, this is the power button. And if you accidentally press it, it just asks if you wanna go into standby. If you press and hold it, you can press and hold it all day long. It will not turn off the ventilator. In order to turn off the ventilator, we'd have to actually go into standby and then turn it off. So there is, are some extra safety steps involved with that. Now the nice thing is also if we do a screen lock on this, these two buttons still are currently active. Now some of our important measurements are going to be all of the peak inspiratory, respiratory rate, tidal volume, and minute volume along with the mean airway pressure. All of those are gonna be on the left-hand side. All of our alarms that are currently set are on this left-hand side as well. Up here in the top left will be your actual mode. So when you're giving a report, you're going to see the mode right here in that top corner. If you're wondering about any of the new naming conventions for these modes, we do have CMV, which is what was volume AC. We have SIMV, which is volume, AC, volume SIMV. APV is the new naming for PRVC, which is that automatic adjusting pressure mode. Then we have APV SIMV, which is gonna be something similar. PCV is gonna be that pressure AC. PSIMV is going to be that pressure AC SIMV. Spontaneous is actually our CPAP with pressure support modes. So we can run straight CPAP or we can run CPAP with pressure support. APRV is gonna be the same. ASV is an artificial intelligence mode where it's going to automatically adjust settings based off how the patient is doing. And then also we have non-invasive, both CPAP non-invasive and a BiPAP non-invasive, as well as high flow. So we can use everything on this ventilator all at once. 
Off to the right here is going to be your most commonly need to know settings. So you got your rate, your volume, your peep, and your oxygen. Now with this ventilator, it is very, very important that we are making sure we under identify this flow sensor here. With this flow sensor, this is how we get all of our volume measurements. This is how the patient is able to be have a proper trigger. I mean, it's very, very sensitive. One thing we have to be very careful of is we need to have a 45 degree angle either up or down, and you can even have a higher degree angle up to a 90 degrees if need be. What will commonly happen is if this particular sensor here gets fluid in it, it's going to say a uh, flow sensor failure, flow sensor circuit fault, something like that. And I'll demonstrate that in a second. Most commonly what happens is this flow sensor tubing will turn upside down and it'll get fluid collected in it and the fluid will go into these pipes. Alrighty, so in here, I went ahead and put in a flow sensor. You can see right here, it's got a whole bunch of ultrasound gel in it. And here, the most important part is, is this is completely occluded. It says check flow sensor tubing, and then it's gonna say flow sensor tubing failure, or flow sensor failure. Here you can see there are two waveforms that are completely missing. External flow sensor has failed and it has switched modes on us. Now it's gonna do this in any mode. When it does this, you can see right here, the patient is still ventilating, because my test lung is still ventilating. It switched to a inspiratory pressure of 15. You can still get a reading of what the current peak inspiratory pressure is, and you even have a waveform. So it's still ventilating the patient, but we, again, need to be assessing the patient seeing are they actually breathing? Are they having chest rise? If they are, then you still need to notify the RT and say, hey, I've got a red light and an alarm saying that the external flow sensor has failed. Would you mind coming over and fixing it? At that point, uh, the RT will look at this and see does the flow sensor needs to be changed or can we fix it? A lot of the times what will cause this is if they cough something up into it or if there's fluid that had collected in these tubes. But that's at the point where the RT does need to come over and see what's going on. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my name is Scott Hawkins and you can email me anytime.